I know. <laughs> Ryan, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Governor. That was actually live on TV. Thank you for the compliment. So you had to wait three minutes tonight to 9.03 until your race was called. How did you uh, while away those minutes? Well, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of calling races early because I think it's a little bit of an insult to the people of Idaho that haven't voted. Obviously, the pontificators at the national level have done a lot of math and knew if certain numbers were coming in, the rest of them would be that way. But I, I'm not a big fan of it. People can wait an hour or two before the results came out, but I'm very gratified by, by the vote, and then we'll wait till the end of the evening to see the magnitude of it. Also, uh, Senator Crapo's race was called in his favor as well. Is this what you expected to kind of see uh, a Republican sweep on the state well, lines? Maybe what we hoped and prayed for and we worked for, uh, but literally today's the people's day. Today's the people of Idaho's uh, chance to make a statement, and we're very gratified that they agreed with what we've done in leadership in the past and what we'll do in the future. We are seeing this split, though, in the Republican Party with the traditional um, moderate Republicans and, ones, and also those who are leaning farther to the right. How can you now, in a second term, work as well as the Democrats and independents well, to bring I, everyone together? Well, I just said up there that I'm going to work with everybody, and I've got a pretty good record to do on that. You know, we have lots of Republicans in Idaho. In fact, Idaho's become an even more Republican state. That, that, that's almost a force of nature. You know, nature abhors a vacuum, and when you get that many of them, they tend to divide a little bit, and, but that's, you know, that really puts a bigger burden on us to try and work with everybody so that the bulk of the people of Idaho know that their work's getting done. I want to ask you about two issues now. Um, no time to celebrate yet. I got to get to some business. The $410 million the legislature approved for education. Yep. Where would you like to see that money go well, when the legislature convenes? Well, obviously, my highest priority is literacy. We'll, we'll get, we're getting new literacy data every day. If we're moving the needle on literacy, maybe we won't have to put more in there. Teacher compensation and career technical. Also, of course, abortion, the new abortion laws that have been passed here in the state. You signed those with very big concerns about enforcement mechanisms and whatnot. When the legislature comes back together, and I realize it's still in the courts, do you think they need to clean up the law to take away some of the gray areas? Well, uh, the courts are going to give us more direction about what's, you, you know, what works on the national level, what's going to, we, we're in both the state court and the federal court. We get those worked out, but I have, you know, I'm going to always continue to be pro-life, but, you know, we've got two lives involved the life of the of the baby and we got the life of the mother and we want to be sure we protect both lives and real quickly sir first order of business once the new session kicks in your new term kicks in uh education will probably be number one okay all right governor little thank you very much congratulations on winning a second term all right Oop. incumbent now governor brad little back to you guys all right doug thank you good to hear from